We had this gospel already uh, on Sunday here, but what's remarkable about this moment, it's set in a place called Ein Karim. Ein Karim is now part of the greater Jerusalem, but back in the time in which this was set here, back in the time of Jesus, it was separate from Jerusalem. The old city of Jerusalem is a very small area, uh, but now it's part of the greater Jerusalem. It's a very scenic and beautiful area in the Judean hills. Lots of vines, and they do a lot of vine growing there. And this is where Mary goes. It's a long journey from Nazareth. It's about 65 miles. And um, we don't know what time of the year it was. Uh, we're, we're guessing. We're doing a lot of calculating because... Uh, we have set the birth of Jesus, um, December, and we work back from that and fit it in. We're not sure exactly if December was the time of the birth of Jesus. That's a calculation that is more theological than historical. But the two women meet here, and they rejoice in the presence of God in their lives. I think what's remarkable about this is that the first bearers of Christ and the first ones to witness Christ, the first ones to believe in the messianic presence of Jesus Christ were two women. This is before the men took over. And as you know, the Gospels were written by men and they were written for men. So it's a very patriarchal society in which all of this is set. And yet in the strength and the dominance of patriarchal society, in God's providence, the first teachers in the ways of Jesus Christ, the presence, the witness of Jesus Christ, are these two women. And since they are so conscious of God's presence, they bring gift and life to one another. When Mary comes bearing Christ, the infant in Elizabeth's womb leapt for joy. I mean, that must be a true uh, example of discipleship. Discipleship is when you meet somebody else and you're carrying Jesus Christ, somehow you give life to the other person. You don't judge. You don't set aside. You don't diminish the other person. Um, you don't make any evaluation of the other person. You bring Christ to the other person. You give the other person life. Uh, it's, a, it's a very important teaching for us, I think, because there's a tendency to make judgments and separate people and, and decide who is worthy and who is not. But here we have uh, the example of the first disciple and the first apostle is Mary, the mother of Jesus. She's the first one that brings Christ to the world. And we are called, as followers of Jesus Christ, to be Christ-bearers, to bring Christ to the world. And wherever we go, especially in this season of joy and, and fulfillment and gathering of people, we are meant to bring joy to people. We are meant to bless people, to lift people up, to give people life, uh, to, to bring smiles and hope and blessing to people. It's a good thing for us to keep in mind. That gift of giving life to people cannot be bought. You cannot buy that in the store. Money can't buy that. This is a gift of life which cannot be purchased. It cannot be earned. It cannot be merited. It's, it's pure gift. It's bringing the presence of Jesus Christ to another person without judgment, without evaluation, to just bless the other person, without demanding anything of the other person. Bring Christ to the other person, and you will give life, the life of Christ, the power of the Holy Spirit, will be given in your visitation and in the manner in which you greet the other person. Amen. We pause now for a moment of prayer.